welcome back everyone I hope you've all had a wonderful Easter and I have another double page layout for you so I might have mentioned earlier that I normally do double page layouts when I have a story to tell and I need lots of photos to tell that story as is the case with this layout I am scrapbooking about my son's Easter hat parade this was when he was in year one or first grade so what I'm doing here is I've got this idea that I'm going to make these Easter eggs and they're going to go all along the border of the layout. But as you will see as the layout progresses, it doesn't work out according to plan and things take a turn. But because I don't pre-plan my layouts, I've got no idea that things aren't going to work as I have them in my head. So what you see me doing here is I'm, well, I'm going to play with the composition of my photos, so I'm just put, giving them a semi-permanent home by using some painter's tape and just putting it on my arm to get rid of some of that tackiness. I did spend a fair bit of time figuring out where these photos were going to go. I did edit most of the process out because it would have just been me putting photos in, taking photos out, changing my mind 50 times. And in the end, I sort of thought that they looked nice to have the three rectangle photos around and then the smaller photos more shot because I wanted to focus on his hat that I made for him sort of in oval egg shapes and that's the way things go. So as this is a double page layout I'm just trying to balance the two pages so that they are similar. I will confess this layout did take me a very long time. I have been dying to use this stamp set since I got it. It's from Neat and Tangled and I'm going to be using that gorgeous little egg. So I started off by getting some watercolour papers from my stash and I'm going to be using my Misty. And I land up using the Rangers Archival Ink in Jet Black. So I'm going to be stamping this little egg quite a few times actually I in the end I land up doing three pages of watercolor stamping and that's because I have an idea of my head that all those four borders along the whole double page layer is going to be eggs well like I said earlier that's not how it works out so here I have got my eggs and they're all stamped out and I'm going to be using my Vicky Booten watercolor paints which I absolutely love my watercolour painting skills leave a lot to be desired so I won't bore you with the whole process. I will say that it did take me quite a long time but you know what I was home alone and I was enjoying the peace and quiet and it was just nice to sit and relax and just do some painting. So the eggs are all coloured in and I used three colours. I used a pink, a purple and an orange and I don't know why my camera keeps picking up purple as blue. I'm now going to be embossing all the bows on all those beautiful eggs with the Lindy Stamp Gang embossing powder and it's a gorgeous, it's an absolutely gorgeous gold. It's a very soft gold, it's not a real in your face gold and I absolutely love it. And what I am using is to as an embossing um, tool is the Rangers embossing pen. Absolutely gorgeous if you want to emboss little fine details. I'm trying to show you the gorgeous gold and the shimmer but really the camera is just not doing it justice. My next step is done off camera. I went to my die cutting machine and I die cut all those eggs. I'm just quickly tracing all the photos so that I know exactly where they go because I'm going to be doing some stenciling next. The stencil I'm going to be using is from Tasercraft. It's called Crackle and it's one of those 12 by 12 size stencils and I absolutely love it. It's going to cover most of my page and I was attracted to the fact that the stencil had all these cracks in it to me I'm, I know it's called crackle but to me it represented um, I was thinking of an easter egg you know when it cracks and you get pieces of easter egg everywhere anyway that was my thought process when picking this stencil so what I did was I got some embossing paste and I mixed it with my Inca gold green yellow paste and I love how it toned down 
the intense color because the Inca gold, the green yellow, was a real intense color. And I just wanted to mute it down. And by mixing it with the white embossing paste, it really did that. And I must say, I love the end result. I love how you can take a stencil, plain paper, put some color, embossing paste, whatever you want to do, and it just changes the whole look and it really just makes the layout. Oh my gosh, I just love how this turned out. And to me, it just, sh to me, I keep thinking that chocolate has just cracked open all over my two pages. And now this was my original plan was to get all these little legs that I put so much effort into making and have them as a border all around my two pages. It's at this point that I realized my egg border idea is not going to work and I start getting upset and a little bit frustrated because I spent so much time making these eggs and I really wanted to use them. And in my head, this border was going to be absolutely perfect, but in real life, not so. So I get out, got out this piece of paper and it's from the Cottontail collection by Bow Bunny and I do a bit of fussy cutting. So I love that as a banner and I love the bunny and I'm going to do some journaling on that little card there. Then I got out the combo sticker sheet that came with the Cottontail, Cottontail collection as well and because I'm not really sure where everything's going to go I am just going to put it on some scrap paper and that way I can move around instead of using the stickers. This is something I always tend to do with stickers because of the fact that I know I like to change my mind. I always just stick it down onto some scrap paper and that way it gives me the ability to move it around, change my mind and it's not stuck down permanently. So as you see, I'm removing all the eggs um, and then I think, well, you know what, if I can't use it along the whole border because it's too, too much, I'm just going to try and use them just at the bottom, a couple of eggs or maybe a few eggs on the bottom of each page but no that don't like that idea so then I think oh I know I'll use them on the side so I'm working I'm trying to get a cluster of eggs happening on the side but then I think no I don't like this idea ever either so as you can see I am being one stubborn mama and I I'm going to get these eggs on this layout and don't worry I do I just keep on persevering I did play around with these eggs for a very long time, but I got it. Three eggs on top, then two, and then one, the little pyramid, and it absolutely works. And the other thing that I knew was, uh, I worked out was throwing me, was I had the three colors, pink, purple, and orange, and the pink had to go. It was just not working for this layout. So once I took the pink eggs out, and I only used purple and orange, I liked what I saw. Something wasn't working on this layer and then I thought look at the photos and see what it is and then it dawns on me. The kids are wearing their school uniform and there's a lot of orange in their school uniform. Their shirts for the boys, they're orange so I thought I've got to incorporate that into the layout. So I got out my trimmer, I trimmed off um, about two mils off all four sides and then I'm just going to give them a quick inking with some Distress Oxide, I forgot what the colour is. And now the layout pops just by using that orange cardstock. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to gut the inside of the paper. And by doing that, I can use that same cardstock to match all my photos. This layout really did test me, but I'm glad I didn't give up and I persevered because I am really happy with the end result. I land up giving the photos two mats. The first mat is a beige colored uh, cardstock that I had in my stash and then I take the orange and the two mats really help to bring out these photos and make them stand out. I matted all my rectangled photos but the little egg shaped ones I, I decided not to. Because I had trimmed all around all four sides of my papers it threw the scale off so my original plan isn't working and my little oval photos Something's wrong, so I pick one of the oval photos and I move it to the other side and yes, that looks so much better to my eye. So I'm just going to back them on some foam and I love this. It gave it the dimension it needed and I know you can't see it on the video, but that extra bit of dimension, it really made everything pop. 
So I'm going to put my little eggs back together and no pink to be seen, just the purple and the orange and I just love it. So I got them down perfectly so I'm going to be very careful not to move their placement. That's why I'm only putting a little bit of glue just to hold them so that they don't move on me because I quite like how everything is looking. The title is going to be very simple, Easter Hat Parade and I'm using some very old product from my stash who remembers these they were once very popular chipboard letters uh, I've got quite a few of them so I'm glad that I'm finally getting some used up and back to my Inca gold in that lovely green yellow and this is perfect for it I just put it on my finger rub it on and yes the cotton bud is just to get into all those little nooks and crannies that my finger was a bit too fat and porky for but love 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 it and that's it I just love it all um, I'm really happy I did struggle with this layout I will not lie uh, but I'm glad I persevered okay we're at the end now if you're still with me thank you so much I know it was a long video but it was two pages and yeah I, I tried to get it as short as I could but thank you everyone till next time um if you're still with me and you haven't subscribed i would love it if you would and um, likes always help us little channels so till next time take care